the known weight of this building mass. You have what are known columns below it in order to resist it. You put the, the building up there and you, you, you let it go in your models and you calculate what the, re what the resistance is. Why didn't they do it? Could it be because they knew darn well that it would not have collapsed at all? Wait, what was the report title? Final report on the collapse of the World Trade Center Twin Towers. Probably should have called it final report on the initiation of collapse. They also cast doubt on their own theory. They say to us in a letter to our request for correction, which several of us applied for and have yet to see adequate results from, we are unable to provide a full explanation of the total collapse of the Twin Towers. Thank you. We think so too. Prompting Jim Hoffman to write uh, Building a Better Mirage, NIST's three-year, $20 million cover-up of the crime of the century in which he documents numerous unfounded assumptions. He documents that it's a mountain of distraction. They'll never read all this stuff. It's a tin rat. 10,000 pages, 1,000 pages modeling the airplanes. And as I mentioned, only half a page on their core presumption. Classic progressive collapse. How can it be classic if it's never before happened in history? As if some initiating element in a steel frame building caused the rest of it to ever collapse. <laughs> he documents the startling omissions and outrageous lies, which you'll have to go into yourself when you have a little more time, and the fudged computer simulations. They document these unrealistic scenarios uh, C and D, and the realistic scenarios A and B. A and B didn't make the building collapse, so they crank up the airplane speed. They reduce the strength of the structure. They increase the fuel. They do all of these adjustments until they get in the more unrealistic scenarios, which they're actually fairly open about, to get the, the computer model to collapse. Structural engineers rail against NIST because they refuse to show the visualization. It's a black box. You cannot download any of this data. This was a public building, or at least before three months prior to 9-11, it was a public building, and it should be a public investigation. Clearly, it was a public event, prompting their former chief of their fire science division, Dr. Quintier, to call for an independent review. Let's look at real alternatives that might have been the cause of the collapse of the World Trade Center Twin Towers. Do we have any whistleblowers? Yes. Kevin Ryan fired from his job for making public the fact that NIST hired Underwriter Laboratory to perform tests. And these tests showed that the building should have remained standing. In fact, there were four mock samples of 35-foot spans two 17-foot spans and two 35-foot spans with fireproofing, just like in the Twin Towers with the floor decking. Now, there's 2,000 degrees of fire put underneath this assembly per ASTM E119 and twice the known amount of load that was known to have been in the Twin Towers. What happens? None of them fail. These are the four tests. The steel temperatures uh, were over 1,100 degrees average. Footnote number three documents that no failure occurred. In fact, there was only three inches of deformation. What does NIST do with this experimental data? They throw it out and they claim that there's a 42-inch sag, ten times the value that resulted from the experiments. Do we have expert corroboration? Well, here's Van Romero. It's too methodical to be a chance result of airplanes colliding with the structure, this explosive expert says. After the airplanes hit the World Trade Center tower, there were some explosives, in my opinion, inside the buildings that caused the towers to collapse. Van has withdrawn these statements after receiving a sizable grant from the federal government. Mike Taylor, a demolition expert, looked like classic controlled demolition. Collapse of the Twin Towers mirrored the strategy used by demolition experts. How about this structural engineer, Ron Brookman? Explosive clouds of dust and debris moving horizontally and vertically upward as the collapse of World Trade Center 1 and 2 are just beginning does not look anything like a heat-induced gravitational collapse mechanism. 
Why a complete collapse of the Twin Towers became inevitable? Why would all 110 stories drop straight down to the ground in 10 seconds, pulverizing the contents? None of the official reports address the issue of total collapse. William Rice, structural engineer, also with architects and engineers for 9-11 Truth. The prevailing theory would have us believe that each of the Twin Towers inexplicably collapsed upon itself, crushing all 287 massive columns on each floor while maintaining a free fall speed as if the 100,000 or more tons of supporting structural steel framework underneath didn't even exist. How about David Scott, structural engineer with AE 911 Truth? Near free fall collapse violates laws of physics. You can memorize that one. How about Scott Granger, fire protection engineer with AE 911 Truth? All three collapses were very uniform in nature. Natural collapses due to unplanned events are not uniform. How about Ed Muniak, with us today, fire protection engineer? The fires were very weak, oxygen starved as evidenced by the black smoke, steel temperatures were low. All three World Trade Center collapses have no resemblance to any previous high rise fire. How about Mathis Levy, who later joined the FEMA team? If you've seen many of the, of the managed demolitions where they implode a building and they cause it essentially to fall vertically because they, they cause the, all of the vertical columns to fail simultaneously. That's exactly what it looked like and that's what happened. That's what happened? What happened, Mathis, after you joined the FEMA team? Did you look for controlled demolition with your initial hunch? No. Neither did this gentleman, Ronald Hamburger, who also joined FEMA after saying, it appeared to me the charges had been placed in the building. Never looked for controlled demolition. How about foreknowledge of these two buildings? FEMA was on site with their exercise tripod too. They had hundreds of people from FEMA, federal government, and the state office of emergency management. They were getting ready for a drill in downtown Manhattan for a biochemical attack. This is per New York Mayor Giuliani. Tom Kenny from FEMA says, we arrived late on Monday night, went right into action on Tuesday. Coincidence? Maybe. Mayor Rudolph Giuliani. I went down to the scene and we set up uh, headquarters at 75 Barclay Street, which was right there with the police commissioner, the fire commissioner, mm -hmm. the head of emergency management. And we were operating out of there when we were told that the World Trade Center was going to collapse. Who gave you that warning? Did you warn the firemen and women? We have plenty of video evidence you've seen, and this suggests all the features of a classic controlled demolition with those exceptions which are atypical of classic controlled demolition. None of these features can be accounted for by fire, let alone all 10 of them. We have supporting evidence. This all goes to support the hypothesis of controlled demolition. It's proof beyond a reasonable doubt. If you're with me so far, you have big problems. It's much easier, given our human nature, to go right into paralysis and take no action because the implications of this are absolutely staggering. We come up with these kinds of questions, which are valid. Uh, our government wouldn't do this to us. Well, we're not saying your government did this to you. Somebody was responsible for this. Somebody somewhere on the inside. We don't know how high up it goes. We don't know how wide it is. I would have heard about it by now. You are hearing about it now. I didn't hear about it until two years ago. It couldn't have been kept a secret that long. Well, the Manhattan Project had thousands of people. It was kept quite a secret for a very long time. I'm not an expert in controlled demolition. Well, wait a minute. Neither am I. But you are the jury, and you have an obligation to make a decision. Guilty or not guilty is typically the decision. In this case, explosive controlled demolition or fire. You have to take this information, process it through your brain, and come up with a decision, and then a course of action. I'm going to help you with the course of action. The decision's a little more difficult. And don't do this. It's too horrible. I don't even want to think about it. I did not even see this stuff tonight, the worst form of denial. You avoid the debate, go back to sleep, and become a part of the problem. And it is a huge problem in America. America is asleep at the wheel. 
Very few of us know about this. We've got